So what I have here is the L293D integrated circuit. Uh, this consists of uh, two bridges that uh, each pair of channels and it's equipped with an enable input. And that's why if you take a look on the left hand side, there are two that are grounded. And on the right hand side, you see there are two pins there and they are both grounded because there's actually four inputs when you connect them together we have an H bridge and those two bridges will control the stepper motor so a uh, quick breakdown of this we have pin 1 here and pin 9 here uh, they're the white colored these are the enable it just enables one uh, side or one H bridge and this one enables the second uh, H bridge um, they can you know easily be disconnected and then of course it wouldn't operate so you could use this as to control for example on the microprocessor which is going to be connected to whether you want the motor to move or not not just to have power but whether you want it to move um, I spoke about the grounding already for these uh, then we have um, the output or actually these will be the input to the chip and it's one two three and four these guys right here uh, basically uh, in work in tandem which uh, series needs to be high which series need to be low and that controls whether this uh, bipolar stepper motor is uh, going to rotate clockwise or uh, counterclockwise there and the uh, 5 volt power rail is pin number 16 uh, and uh, it's important, of course, to make sure that you really label this so you know what, uh, where it's going because pin number eight, this yellow cord right here, corresponds to the 15 volt that I have it connected to. And what that means is um, it uh, is an uh, external power supply that's gonna uh, be connected to this chip and it will in turn decide uh, which coils are powered up for this particular motor because clearly the 5 volt that powers this chip isn't sufficient enough to additionally power up the motor so this is a, an, an additional power supply so you're looking at two power supplies for this chip to operate correctly with this bipolar uh, motor um, so we've got the uh, 5 volt for the integrated circuit we've got the ground here it's the common ground for both and then we have a 15 volt that I set up particular for this uh, motor right here um, I try to keep everything fairly consistent so my yellow is my external power supply for this guy here so that goes up to my uh, hot rail here and then uh, the yellow cable here and then I wrapped a little cord here for yellow and here's the power supply for those two uh, powers and you can see when I flip this on that my 5 volt is set to just a little over 5 volt and this is with my 18 volt max is set to output for my 20 volt output again this yellow corresponds to this cord here which corresponds to my of course input to this chip for this guy and it uh, is set to my 20 volt right now and if I flip it up to my plus 20, you can see that it's approximately set to 15 volts. I got 15 volt, that's one power supply, and the five volt, this one's for the integrated circuit itself. So the reason why I'm working on this is I have a Motorola 68HC11, and uh, that's guy, this guy's over here. And what I want it to do is uh, my PC1, PC2, PC3, and PC4, they're going to be designated as outputs. And they will uh, control uh, which are, pins are high, which pins are low, because I want it to control my stepper motor to rotate clockwise or counterclockwise. And I'll also use a button to be program this so it'll change at different rates. And um, I've also got a potentiometer here, so I'm going to connect this to... Uh, my code which will when I turn this it will rotate slower or faster depending on um, how I want this program this is a bipolar motor and the reason it's bipolar is because it's got a four wires if it was unipolar it would have a fifth wire that connects to uh, high uh, the easiest way to know which two coils you're working with now I just labeled them coil one and uh, coil two uh, the numbers don't mean anything specific just trying to keep them separate um, but how you can you know like how did I know this one was one set of coils well the easiest way to do is uh, take this multimeter or any multimeter you have and rotate it to your ohms reading and what you're going to do is 
take one set so take let's say this wire let's say you wanted you had a green one and then um, measure it with this red one and then after that measure it with a random one like let's say measure it against this yellow one and if both of these are the same then it's probably not this one so you measure it with um, with this gray one and if you notice for example that your resistance is much lower then these two are a set because those coils when you connect them together are basically a short circuit uh, so that's what you're looking for and then measure these two and you'll notice that they're also low as well if, if you measured one that didn't make sense so if you measured uh, this gray one uh, the resistance and the, um, the ohm reader and then you measure it against this yellow one you would notice that the resistance would be extremely high or it would show as if you're not measuring anything at all so that's how you know then that those aren't a match the ones that have a lower resistance they are a match and that makes sense and then so this just following the schematic that I have here um, this dip right here is the one that I'm using up to as I said 16 so this guy here is for the 5 volt powering this chip Number eight is the uh, external power supply unit for the stepper motor. And then we have input one, input two, input three, and input four. Those are my blue ones here that I just relabeled and moved to the left-hand side so I can work with them a little bit easier. And then right in the center, four, five, 12, and 13, these guys are ground and they are um, green colored accordingly. Uh, ignore the colors on these guys uh, for the stepper motor. Um, it's not significant with respect to my color coding um, on my breadboard. So uh, I'm going to um, work on the code next and um, trying to get this guy to control this motor. Otherwise, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below or just head to my website, bucketofmass.com. Thanks again for watching. Bye.